Hi there, this is Scott Duffy from softwarearchitect.ca. More than 80,000 people trust me to teach them things such as Microsoft Azure. In this video, we're going to talk about Windows Server 2016 virtual machine inside Microsoft Azure. We're going to switch over to the Azure portal and we're going to create ourselves a Windows Server. I'm going to go into the Create a Resource link. Now, the Windows Server 2016 is the first option under Getting Started. I could alternately search the marketplace for different images. There's multiple versions of Windows Server 2016, but I'm not going to search around. I'm just going to pick the first one. There are four pages of settings that we have to go through, although the last page is just a confirmation page. We have to give it a name. So I'm going to say Windows. Now the name just has to be unique for my account. There's no because this is a virtual machine and not a web app, there's no fully qualified domain name. I do get to choose the disk type. Now there are two types of disks. There's the classic, which is magnetic spinning drives, hard drit disks. And then there's the flash solid state drives. Depending on the option that we choose, we're going to get different options for virtual machine images to choose from. Of course, the solid state disks are faster in terms of the IO throughput, but the solid, uh, the hard disk space comes in larger, larger sizes and is a little bit cheaper. I have to tell them a username and password. So let me, let me create one here, AZ. There you go, easy enough. Now, hopefully uh, you've got a subscription to Azure, either a free subscription or this pay as you go plan or one of the MSDN subscriptions or your corporate enterprise subscription. We have to put this into a resource group. It doesn't really matter what you call it. All of the resources you create under the same group are just going to be lumped together. I choose one of Microsoft's 42 worldwide locations for, um, for Microsoft Azure. East US 2 is as good a choice as any, but um, I do not have a Windows li license to bring with me, and I'll click OK. This is the fun part. This is where we get to choose a size. So I'm because I chose the SSD type, I'm only going to see SSD compatible virtual machines. Microsoft is suggesting some to me from the price of $380 a month all the way down to $100 a month. But if I click View All, I'm going to get a much wider range of VM sizes. In fact, there are dozens of them. So I'm going to go down to the bottom. I usually like to choose one of the cheaper ones for these types of tests. So it doesn't really, it doesn't matter for this moment, but if you're choosing a virtual machine for a particular purpose, you're going to want to study these and see how many CPUs you're getting, how much memory, what's the potential for, for external disks, uh, IO speeds and stuff like that. I'm going to choose the F1 SSD version that runs about $80 a month. There are cheaper uh, versions, but I'll, that'll be good for now. The first one of the first questions on the settings screen has to do with availability set. So Microsoft has this concept called availability set, which will allow you to group vir multiple virtual machines together. And Microsoft will take care of distributing them in their data center in a highly available way. So you do not want to create five virtual machines. And by some coincidence, they're all running on the same physical hardware. And then that something happens to the power, uh, the power for that rack and all five of your virtual machines go down. If you choose an availability set and you put your machines in an availability set, then Microsoft's going to distribute them into their data center. Microsoft has this concept called Manage Disks. You can have a storage account where you have to take care of um, managing yourself in terms of your space allocation, make sure you don't run out of disk space, or you can use the Manage Disk. You're just paying for consumption. I'll leave it as the default. I'm going to leave all the network settings as the default as well and not install any extensions. Extensions are great if you need to do some reporting and monitoring and things like that. We do have this auto shutdown, which I do like to choose when I am doing testing. So 
I'm going to set this to 11 p.m. and I'm going to set this into my own time zone. That way this machine will stop charging me for the, the compute power at 11 o'clock. Do I need to be notified? I'll say no. I'm going to leave all the rest as default. It's going to create a diagnostics account for me and I'll click OK. Now this is the summary screen I was talking about. So you can see that the pricing is 11 uh, 0.8 Canadian cents per hour. This does work out to the $80 a month option that I had chosen. Of course, I could I could obviously change this at a later date if I want to uh, scale it up or scale it down. So I see all of the options that I have chosen. If I go down to here, I can then download a JSON template that will basically let me configure this exact server again and again and again. So this JSON template can be used in conjunction with a PowerShell script, for instance, that will allow you to create copies of this as many times as you need. If you get the settings exactly right, this is a form of automation. I'm not going to go that route. I'm just going to say create. And so once I said create, you'll see here that I have a Windows Server 2016 that's being deployed. This has automatically added it to my dashboard, although I can choose uh, to remove it. Dashboards are configurable. So that's it. It took me only a couple of minutes to create a Windows Server. Uh, it's going to take about 10 minutes to start because it has to get a lot of resources for the network and the NIC, NIC card and all that stuff. But this server will be available for me to use. That's your quick start for creating a Windows Server 2016 virtual machine within Microsoft Azure. My name is Scott. Thanks a lot. And check out the links in the description below if you're really interested in learning more about Microsoft Azure.